Hey, so this morning we're going to look at verses 10 through 15 of chapter 15. Here's what it says. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel arose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel saying, Saul went to Carmel and indeed he set up a monument for himself and he has gone on around, passed by and gone down to Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Saul said, But Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed." So let's pause there again and look at this section of the totality. Again, we're going piece by piece, morning by morning. The command was to destroy all the sheep, everything. But, but notice how Saul puts the spin on it. So let's start with God's reaction because God has an opinion here. He says, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king. So some people have a trouble with this. They're like, well, doesn't God know what he's doing before he does it? But again, Saul would be one way and Saul has free will. Saul can change his mind. And so Saul is now manifesting the problems of having a one guy be your king, one, one human guy, one sappy human guy, he's your king. And guess what? Sometimes, sometimes people make mistakes. Sometimes even your leaders, your kings make mistakes. So there's a problem there. He has turned back. So Samuel's grieved and he prays about it. He talks to God all night long, but it isn't changing what's in Saul's heart. Saul has to be open in some respect to changing that. So he goes, they go to meet, they meet each other, and notice the way that it's addressed in verse 13. Saul says to Samuel, hey, blessed are you of the Lord, I've performed the commandment of the Lord. Well, that's purely a lie because he comes back, of course. What then is this bleeding of the sheep and the lowing of the oxen? Well, I, I hear this, uh, you, could, you did the commandment of the Lord, really? Really, how was that? And so then we get this kind of cheapish, you know, dog ate my homework answer, right? They have brought them from the Malachites, but the people, it wasn't me, it wasn't me the king, it wasn't me the one who was responsible, the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. So we're going to sacrifice them, but we've destroyed the rest. So again, this wasn't the commandment we had at the beginning of chapter 15, not at all. I think Saul's trying to do some fast thinking here, like like what? Like God is going to be, God didn't get it right the first time? No, Saul, God got it right the first time. A grim lesson for us here, again, as we had the previous morning, being led by the people when you're the ones that's responsible to do what's right, God has placed you in that position to do what's right, but you're letting now these, these people who want some of the stuff, you're letting them take some of the spoil against the direct and plain command of God, may it, may it not be. God forbid. This is sad, but it's going to show whether this guy should be king or not. Let's pray about this. Your Father in heaven, we uh, are looking at this. Uh, this is a grim situation. Saul has been so strongly entrusted from heaven. Do the right thing. And so, Lord, we are concerned. We want to be right with you. You've entrusted so much to us, such great responsibility, such great privilege has been given to us to do your work in these crazy hours. And so help us, Lord, not to bend to what's convenient, not to bend to what's politic, but help us to be as faithful as the needle is to the pole on a compass. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So friends, uh, let's be careful. Find out what God's command is, and then let's do it with might. And God will bless that every single time. God be with you today and bless you this day.